no with a message. We had some settings that were a bit off before. Um, there was a comment or uh, Mr. Two Twelve Fourteen. If you're tuning in again, uh, oh, looks yeah. way better. Okay. I don't know how those settings got changed. All right. Yeah, the settings were kind of wigwam there for a minute. But um, how, can you see how if we've lost people or uh, we probably have lost some folks? And is this uh, red line? Oh, yeah, you can just click off of that if you want. They're not seeing that. Oh, they're not? Yeah. Okay. And then I go down to uh, Wayne's page when, yeah, we, when we start. I don't want to do that yet. Okay. But, and then you have um, to click on the. It's all good now. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, we don't want to do that yet. Um, how many? I just want to get a good amount of people before I start going into yeah, all of that. Let's see. So I'm Wayne. If you're tuning in for the first time, mixed media art is what we're talking about today. Um, what you can use, what you might have available um, in your home, um, in your possession, um, clothing, um, photographs, uh, maps, um, anything around uh, your home that uh, you may have saved that's in your drawer. Um, you can cut up tear up, glue. Uh, there are no rules in mixed media when you're creating art and you're telling a story. Uh, today what I want to do is actually walk you through my own personal trauma, my own personal nightmare as a child. When I was uh, six or seven years old I had a reoccurring nightmare and, um, and that stayed with me for years. I'm 51 today and uh, about six or seven years ago I guess um, in my studio practice uh, making art, uh, I was approached by a client uh, who was working on a, a dream journal um, with poetry and writing and, and art and asked if I'd be willing to do the cover art for this particular journal. And they said, you know, you could interpret, it, interpret uh, one of your own dreams. Uh, and I had this particular nightmare that I was afraid to talk about. I didn't want to go there uh, because it's too painful for me. But um, through the encouragement of some friends, um, if you're tuning in, let me know where you're coming from. I'd love to hear, hear from you as I keep talking here. But uh, um, through the encouragement of some friends, uh, uh, they suggested to move into this particular dream and nightmare that I had using art to tell this story. And uh, so I did. Um, and what I would encourage you to do uh, if you are struggling, which um, everybody does, we're all human, we all struggle, um, is to consider art as a way to express yourself and to use your voice. And um, if you're tuning in today, that's probably why um, uh, you're uh, partaking of this uh, amazing uh, nonprofit, Creative Vets. So um, with my particular dream, um, I started with a sketch and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Take a pencil and a piece of paper. If there's something that you uh, are afraid to talk about, you're afraid to share, you're afraid to put out there for other people, uh, but you want to use art as a tool to kind of get into that space, sketch it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it can be just a very rough idea. Uh, it can be abstract. It doesn't have to be um, specific in terms of um, detail and, um, you know, uh, the specific, you know, surroundings or, or whatnot, but um, let your subconscious kind of take you into that space. Uh, and for me, uh, let's see here. Brett, can you, t can you see how many people are, are on? Okay. Hello, 10 folks, whoever you are. Can you see them talking to you? Because I can't really see. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to take you through. I'm gonna, uh, if you're still hanging with me here, uh, I'm going to take you through uh, my... Um, actually, I lost this. Here we go. Um, so you can see that, Brett? Yep. Okay. So for me, as a child, as a seven-year-old, 
my reoccurring nightmare was being chased by men in wolf masks through uh i'll move this down can can you see me as well as that yep, I can see okay picture, so. okay uh but in my my reoccurring nightmare as a child was being chased through the forest by men in wolf masks and uh it, part of my story is sexual abuse that's part of my trauma and so uh, about six or seven years ago through the encouragement of friends and this particular client uh, I kind of went there. I thought, well, you know, it was I was scared shit to kind of go into that memory, but um, I sketched out this particular scene. Uh, my son at the time, I have three kids, and he was probably, well, he's about my age when this happened to me. He was about seven or eight, and I had him pose uh, take, to take some quick photos of him with his profile, you know, uh, shot and, and standing with his mouth kind of looking like he was screaming just a couple of shots um, of him so I worked from him and uh, found some reference images of different wolves and and uh, and the scene I've, and then you can see in this and I'll walk you through um, how I constructed it but uh, there's everything from leaves and dirt and wood to actual tree limbs and um, rocks there's rope and uh, cardboard um, and so it not only became this uh, two-dimensional piece uh, and not only did I make it uh, you know uh, kind of bring it to life but I brought it to life in a massive size it ended up being five feet high by four feet wide and then 38 inches deep um, and as we scroll down I'll show you kind of the process of, of how it came together here. But I want you to think about uh, you as you engage art and your own memory, your own trauma, your own story, how you might consider using mixed media to tell that story. Um, in this case, I used a canvas. It's a five feet by four feet canvas. And I knew that I wanted the scene to be in the forest or in the woods um, based on my nightmare. So I just began um, referencing different, you know, kind of ethereal, like um, very uh, mysterious looking forest scenes with color composition to communicate, you know, feeling. Um, and I began to just paint. And in this particular project, it was, uh, there was a lot of aggression and a lot of movement and it came together very quickly, uh, more so than my other project because I think I was tapping into my psyche and my subconscious here. But um, and you can see the canvas is, has, I began to paint the forest scene on it and uh, used rope in some places. You can see the floor, because it's kind of how it began to find its way to build outward in, in, in addition to up and sideways. But uh, I wanted some type of forest floor, so I just smudged a lot of paint and cloth and texture on the f forest floor here, books. Uh, tore them up, put some book pages in there. Um, cl cloth, I think, is I tore, tore some clothing up and, and began to crumble it up. And then I went outside and I got a bunch of tree limbs and different, um, you know, pieces of twigs and um, leaves and things. And I began to set them around as I built this scene up. Uh, you can see I cut out my uh, image of the boy, which is actually me here in striped pajamas. Uh, using again my son as as the model here, but um, and in the back there's another figure that I was starting to bring to life, who was the perpetrator. Um, he was in the background, and I wanted him to be there, but not really be seen out front. Um, and uh, so I, I work a lot on the floor of the studio because of how I construct the work, because it's uh, a lot of puzzle making and piecing together where I can't really you know, have things upright um, until it's actually glued together. But uh, so you can see how it began to come together. I'm standing on a chair as I took this photograph. Um, and uh, can you see how many people are out there? Uh, how many are tuning in? Still at 10. Still at 10, okay. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and listening. I appreciate that. Um, hopefully this will encourage you to move further uh, in your own life and, and journey here. Here's a close-up of shot of me as the boy. Um, and uh, I used rope for his hair, uh, painted rope, cardboard. My, my face is cut out of cardboard. Um, 
and uh, there's cloth strips in the stripes of the pajamas, and, and you can see one of the, uh, one of the wolves here uh, to the right, and we'll go further into the wolves. I used this nylon rope, uh, I think is what I use. I cut it up and just in little tiny pieces. Um, I brought some rope today, but you know, hang on one second. Uh, I'll be right back. All right. So you can see, this is not nylon rope, but um, if you take a uh, good old farm rope, take a scissors to it and, and begin cutting shards of it off, it begins to create this uh, incredible texture, which is what I used uh, around the body of the wolf here and began you know, giving it some shape and color. If you're creating something, uh, I always encourage people to, like for instance, if you're making an apple, you're trying to bring an apple to life uh, as a concept or the, a still life. Um, apples don't always need to be red. Um, there's an entire color palette out there that uh, you use your imagination. Uh, it can be blue, it can be purple. Um, so in this case, with the wolf, uh, you know, it's not gray and black. I used purples and pinks and, you know, certainly grays and, and blacks as well. But um, let your mind take you wherever your hands are moving towards. You can see I lined up all the different wolves on the back uh, behind my studio outside and, and put them on a white background to take uh, pictures of how they were coming together here. Um, and as I was building this piece, um, I really felt like I wanted, something in me said, put these little kind of binds and um, kind of wraps around the snouts of the of the wolves. I can't tell you why, but um, they actually ended up becoming parts of my pajamas. As you can see, if I scroll back here, it all ties together. Um, so my striped pajamas are, are red uh, striped pajamas, like the vintage looking pajamas. And as I was making um, the piece, and building it, you know, I wanted these stripes on the noses and snouts of the of the um, of the wolf to symbolize uh, loss and something having having been taken. And I left some of the stripes on my pajamas. You can see here, kind of half hanging on and off, and not completely um, constructed. And uh, as I was building this quickly and moving fast, it, it, as it came together very easily, uh, something in me said just to leave that as it is um, to con communicate more of the story of, of uh, what happened in terms of my, my uh, trauma. This guy in the background who's the perpetrator dude, I left him, for some reason I left him till the very end. Uh, I had some photographers coming to my studio uh, the day that I actually whipped him together and brought him to life. I just kept putting him off and putting him off. And um, I didn't want to really engage that part of my story, but, um, but I did and, I, and he came together. Here's the mouth of, of him over his eyes and face. You can see if we scroll back, I put uh, a wolf mask on him, uh, which is, uh, you can kind of see this very tiny, uh, right here and he's actually wearing that uh, mask is very tribal um, and uh, so um, this is how his mouth ended up uh, looking and coming together here and uh, again I waited till the very end to, to bring that part of my uh, story to life so uh, once it was assembled um, in my studio I stood up the canvas the very the background um, you know, leaned it up against a wall. The floor of the forest, I actually went outside and I just began scooping up um, pine cones and leaves and, you know, pieces of wood and, um, and just started putting them on the floor and building this floor out further um, from me and, uh, you know, kind of stood my little child self up using uh, like a dowel, I think. I, I put a dowel on the back of that figure and then pu put it inside of a brick or something to hold it up. Um, and I felt it was important for me uh, to be holding a teddy bear uh, as I'm running away from, uh, you know, to symbolize innocence again. 
um, here. And so um, a photographer, a friend of mine, came to the studio that day once I kind of brought it all up and together, put it together, and, um, and we lit it in such a way that we had all the lights off in my studio, and he um, had this process of, of actually um, using a flashlight to kind of circle around the moon and, and kind of delayed the flash as we uh, photographed this piece where it would light the moon up in the way that you see and, and kind of cast this blue tinted hue across the whole piece or the background here and then we kind of spotlit the child in the front with the the wolf kind of lunging out at my ankles here but it just came together really beautifully and you know when I was making this piece I was really pissed off I was angry I was scared um, I wrote down how I was feeling with a you know a, a black marker pen and above my workbench I would just jot down like feeling triggered or feeling really pissed off whatever the feeling was I tried to um, just document the whole process and um, having worked so quickly and, and being f so full of angst while I was building this, I cut my hands two or three times um, with an X-Acto blade by flipping pieces over. It was accidental, but I, I really, I've been doing this for 15 or 20 years and I really do that. Uh, but that just showed me the, the amount of energy and um, what was behind this memory and this particular piece for me was, uh, there was a lot of energy uh, there. Um, and uh, so that hopefully, um, I don't think there's any other process images, um, but what I can do is read part of, um, again this was six or seven years ago, maybe longer. Oh, I know what I was going to share. Um, so as I had all this angst and I was working quickly and I my fingers were, you know, my hand was getting cut by the blade and stuff, I was really angry um, underneath all that anger was sadness really but um, so I uh, thought you know why am I doing this it doesn't really matter I'm not gonna sell the work nobody's gonna really see it other than it's gonna go on the cover of this you know journal that nobody really knew about and uh, so I was kind of feeling like ah, is it really worth it do, do I need to do this you know and um, so when I had the piece finished and it was photographed and it was still together in my studio I had some people come by to um, who were signing up for one of my workshops and um, they were going to pay their deposit and this one particular woman came in and she's all excited to be in my studio and see what I'm doing and what I'm creating and and making and uh, she's like, oh, what are you, what are you making? W what's going on over here? And I said, well, this is my, my personal story. And, uh, you know, I was sexually abused as a kid, and I brought it to life through this piece of art. And she began to weep uh, in my studio, and it kind of just threw me off. Like, it was like, whoa, you know. And before she left, I mean, she was in tears, and she gave me the deposit. And she looked at me, and she said, you know, uh, a day or two later, she came back, and she said, I drove around for three hours after I left your studio and she said I've never told anybody this but your story is my story and uh, and so that was the first of many um, people that came up to me or sent me a note or um, broke down in tears another woman and her daughter came to my studio I was working on an album cover package for uh, this woman's daughter and um, we were talking about uh, you know her project and she like the other woman was very excited to see my studio and be in the midst of you know a working artist I guess uh, and, um, and she said what are you working on over here and this particular piece was still you know standing in my studio and I said that's my personal story and she her arms kind of fell down to her side and she kind of fell into this chair and she said that's my son's story she said my son was abused by a Cub Scout leader and I was like whoa my head was spinning and I was like man so I share that because I want you to consider um, any doubt or any you know um, second guessing that you may have to engage your own story um, to move into that because you never know who it's going to connect with uh, and we're all human we all have pain we've all experienced life and um, 
the beauty of art and the beauty of um, engaging your personal story with art is so powerful. And uh, I, I really want to encourage you to, um, to, to, to go there. And if you want to reach out to me personally, uh, please go to my website. And if you have questions or if you um, maybe missed a portion of, of this uh, story, you're tuning in late, whatever it is, I'd love to, to engage you and, and help you um, navigate uh, you know, what you may be going through. Uh, personally. The title of the work ended up becoming uh, through uh, a good friend of mine, Dane Anthony is his name, and, and Dane um, is a spiritual director. Uh, he's a good friend as well, but in one of my talks with him, you know, I shared this uh, work and the story with him, and uh, Mr. 2, 12, 14, thank you. Um, and uh, it's amazing when you realize how people hold the same secrets. Yes, it's so true. Uh, and uh, yes, you're welcome. I'm seeing people kind of um, tune in here. Uh, thank you all for your comments. But uh, but as I was meeting with my spiritual director, uh, I shared the work with him, and and he you know struggling with a, a title, and he said, you know, when when I hear about your story, I think of the word pray and not only pray but prayed upon pray so when you're praying for somebody and then you're prayed upon by somebody he said take the the words and kind of use them against each other and so i thought that was a brilliant um title for this particular piece prayed upon pray and uh and it became um uh, the working title uh, for this piece and so um there's another story I'll share with you behind behind the work. So I was invited to be a part of a, of a, actually to have a an art show here in Nashville um, several years ago, 2014 I think, and it housed uh, several of my pieces. And this piece in particular, I brought back to life and rebuilt up with new uh, tree limbs and and you know fresh greens and all that stuff. And and it was the pretty it was the largest piece in the in the show. There were probably 20 or so pieces in the show and there was a uh, our local PBS station came by and did a story um, on the work and on the show and uh, you know much to my surprise they they uh, stopped on this particular piece and they said can we interview you specifically about this piece and I was like well shit I guess here we go <laughs> so I was on PBS uh, here in Nashville talking about my story, um, it, it just blew me out of the water because I thought they're never going to want to, you know, it's too touchy of a subject. Um, but sure enough, and they've aired that story four times since then. Um, it's probably one of the most, uh, you know, popular uh, stories that they've had. And every time it airs, people send me a personal message or an email and say, I, you know, I relate to your story. This is my story, um, too. And uh, so, uh, Again, I encourage you as you um, struggle out there. I know I do too. Uh, and uh, but to engage using the power of art, using materials, uh, photography, mixed media, which is my my medium here, but um, uh, clay, whatever it is, um, it's a wonderful tool to uh, tap into that part of yourself that could communicate to the world. It can communicate to you as well. Um, and help you work through through that trauma in your own life. So um, that's what I have for you today. Uh, next time I will actually maybe take you through um, uh, more of a project-based uh, uh, mixed media project uh, specifically. But um, but I felt like this is what I wanted to share with you. You know, in terms of. Uh, uh, really getting vulnerable and honest with you about my own trauma and using art to to navigate that um, and I hope it encourages you I hope it uh, helps you to know that you're one not alone and two um, that there are options and there are others out there who um, have and share your story and um, but uh, you know unless we talk about it unless we have the courage to um, dig in um, will remain alone so um, know that you can hold your head up and reach out and uh, um, if you have questions for me please you know let me know and I'm glad to engage you as well so 
um, that's what I have for you today. And uh, I don't know, if Brett, you have anything else you want to share or uh, what else? Who else have we got here? Oh, gosh. Okay. Hey, well, we got a good audience. Our friends Johnny and Heidi are hosting with 14 of theirs. Oh, nice. Okay, Johnny and Heidi, hello to you and your friends. Um, thanks for tuning in. Jason Myers. Uh, John. Hey, John. How are you, buddy? Uh, we texted last week, I guess, uh, a few times. Um, so, yeah, thank you all for tuning in and, and uh, letting me share my story. And uh, until next time, uh, we'll do it again. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks, Brett. All right. Well, that was quick. And we are a nonprofit that's helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry, to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.